G'day everyone, welcome back to True Footy as we are two days out from the 2023 AFL National Draft. And one thing I have been kind of anticipating is that as we get closer to the draft, we'd hear a little bit more late mail uh, news and rumors in terms of well, it's double faceted now. On the one hand, you get more tidbits about you know which players certain clubs are looking at with their various picks. And there's usually a few surprises as we will cover in this video. And then there's also talk of what potential live trades are going to happen. And once again, I have some pretty juicy information. Now I did a mock draft about a week ago on the channel now. And uh, in that video, I said, I'll probably do one more before the actual draft itself, which might seem excessive, but I said that in anticipation for the fact that we were going to find out some late information prior to this draft that would shake things up. And I've already started working on my final mock draft, which will include some live trades. And I'm potentially going to try and incorporate some of the ones I'm going to talk about today. And I'll try and have that up by Sunday morning. But let's crack into the rumors at hand. Before I do that, though, if you could do me a huge favor and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I did set this goal of getting to 24K by draft day. I've got two days to get about 169 giggity uh, new subscribers before then. So if you could help me out, that would be much appreciated. I'm going to be doing heaps of draft content. Obviously, we'll be back next year. And I will also be doing a live stream for at least day one, potentially day two of the draft as well. So stick around. Cool. All right. So let's talk about some live trade rumors that have come into... Um, the news cycle, I suppose that is the end of that sentence. I did a live trade predictions video uh, earlier this week, but uh, this is based on some actual reported rumors from a variety of sources, most notably Code Sports and Joe Clark, and then a fair bit from Fox Footy as well. So we'll talk about what has been actually reported now. So the first one is in relation to the West Coast Eagles trying to potentially land Daniel Curtin and Harley Reid in this upcoming draft. Now, in recent times, you know, I think even in my draft podcast, uh, which uh, hasn't come out yet, people through the comments have even put this scenario to me. What would uh, what would you think of trading West Coast future first round pick uh, into this year's tra uh, draft live to try and get Daniel Curtin as well? And up to this point, I'm pretty sure it was all hypothetical. This is the first actual reporting that I'm aware of anyway. Uh, the fact that West Coast are now expected to do this deal with GWS. So specifically, what we're talking about here is GWS is what is currently pick seven. If Daniel Curtin is still on the board, West Coast could offer, or is likely to offer, according to this article on Code Sports, their future first round pick for pick seven. Now we don't know the finer details of that. We don't know if there's any other change going one way or the other. And so we're just going to take it on face value. In general, we know that it would cost them uh, their future first round pick. There's no other way to facilitate that deal. So that's very, very interesting. Uh, some of the other parts of the article suggest that the Giants are looking probably at Caleb Windsor with that selection currently. And it also goes on to say that the Demons, who are also very keen on Caleb Windsor, know that they would have to pick Caleb Windsor at pick six, which will become eight, because they know that he won't be available at their next pick. And according to the article, they think that Windsor will be gone as early as GWS's following pick. So this trade hypothetical depends on the availability of Daniel Curtin, because Daniel Curtin could get picked up at pick five. Uh, I've read as well that Hawthorne have rejected or showed no interest in trading for West Coast Future First. Equally, Melbourne have not been keen on that offer. So GWS is uh, reportedly the first team in that order that would um, consider this trade. Now, if it were up to me, I'd probably take Daniel Curtin if I'm Melbourne, but if they are that keen on Caleb Windsor and are willing to take him at pick six, that that is actually what necessitates this deal because there's a chance GWS say, we're happy with Caleb Windsor and don't do the trade. But the pros and cons of this are interesting because West Coast is probably the likely wooden spoon candidate for next year as well. So it's a case of West Coast trading future pick one, potentially pick one, and if at a stretch, pick four or five. That's an absolute stretch for Daniel Curtin this year. I haven't decided what I think about that yet. Uh, I can't help but feel a little bit like I want some instant gratification and the, the prospect of adding Reed and Curtin at the same time is very, very exciting to me. However, the cost would be significant and it would rely on West Coast somehow escaping the bottom four next year to make that a, a fairly even deal in terms of what's being traded. 
So the, the tidbits from this article are very interesting. Uh, the, there's a suggestion that the Demons could take Caleb Windsor with their first selection, which is the earliest we've seen him linked. Uh, and then if not, then most likely the Giants at the following pick. Of course, Daniel Curtin could go at pick five to Hawthorne, uh, which would shake things up a little bit because then Nick Watson would be available to the Bulldogs. Do they go him or Caleb, uh, Riley Sanders? And then you'd think Melbourne would pounce on whichever one the Bulldogs don't opt for. So... The domino effect of and, and of all these re repercussions of these selections from pick five down are very, very interesting. As a West Coast fan, you know, if there is a scenario where Daniel Curtin gets traded to West Coast for a future first round pick, you know, I'd love to think that maybe it's pick one next year or future first next year for seven and 16, but 23 goes back to GWS. That's, that's the more palatable option for me. And I think that alleviates some of the risk if we're also upgrading 23 to 16. But there's no suggestion that's what's being done. And at the end of the day, West Coast probably, even though on face value, this deal would probably be slanted in GWS's favor, you feel like it's West Coast bringing the urgency and GWS in theory have the leverage here. So I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if it's just a straight swap for pick seven. And West Coast with Curtin and Reed, as exciting as that would be, would kind of put themselves in the position of really needing to rise up the ladder quickly to justify that trade. In other news, Essendon are another team uh, in numerous places, most notably Fox Footy, where it's been reported that they're considering a trade down from their current selection, <clears throat> which is pick nine. I think I said it was 11 the other day. I think it'll be 11 after um, Academy bids, but we'll call it nine for now. Now, on the one hand, we know that uh, the most public links, uh, you know, with Geelong's pick, firstly, is Nate Caddy, and Essendon have been firmly linked with Connor O'Sullivan, the key position defender. But apparently, according to Fox Footy again, or where it says draft sources have told Fox Footy, the Bombers are pondering a trading down this first selection, not necessarily too far, but acquiring another pick to strengthen their draft hand. And further to this, they've been linked to uh, Swan Districts player Riley Hardiman, who was with WA's captain at the under-18s and has um, you know, been a good, reliable intercept defender and potentially a wingman as well. So Essendon, this is too early for Essendon to take Hardiman at pick nine or what will become pick 11. So it makes sense for them if they're happy with the talent on the Hardiman's level, would they be open to trading that pick for other picks? Now, the, the other common teams that are linked to potentially facilitating this deal with Essendon, there's two primary ones. There's Adelaide and the City Swans. So we'll talk about Adelaide first. They currently hold picks 10, 14, and 20. And the article suggests as well, they're willing to condense those three picks down to two to try and get two really good selections. And this could open the door here for Essendon. Would Adelaide be willing to move up one spot in the draft and give up pick 20? Well, maybe. If their target is Conor O'Sullivan, they obviously need a key position defender. In the plenty of mocks that I've done um, leading up to this point, I found it hard to get Adelaide a key position defender with the picks that I have if they don't you know, um, reach for someone like an Ollie Murphy at 20 where he seems to be sliding. I actually think that would be a really good pick anyway. But regardless, Adelaide uh, reportedly have their man in Conor O'Sullivan. That's who they want. So Essendon could turn uh, you know, pick nine into pick 10 and pick 20 and have a stronger overall draft hand. They forego the possibility of Conor O'Sullivan. Presumably, that's who Adelaide wants. That has been what has been reported. That is not actually just my opinion. And maybe with pick 20, they pick up Ollie Murphy anyway. So if they're looking for a key defender, uh, I think Ollie Murphy's a pretty good prospect. Alternatively, we know Sydney has also been uh, sniffing around trying to improve their pick 12 and try and get into the top 10. And again, it's been reported this is to get their hands on Connor O'Sullivan, who I think in the last mock I had uh, as a Victorian, he is a New South Welshman, played for the Allies, but he also played in the Coach Talent League for the Murray Bush Rangers. So uh, I know it gets a little bit blurry there. I thought he was kind of both, but maybe he's just a New South Welshman. But that is another possibility for Essendon to trade this pick to the Sydney Swans and they would acquire pick 12. They can get their man in Hardiman. And uh, the, what else they would be getting was likely next year's uh, priority pick that once belonged to North Melbourne. So on the balance of those two things, I'd say Essen is probably getting more tempted by a pick in this year's draft uh, because of obviously the immediate gain from that. And obviously they only shuffle back one pick in that scenario, not two or three. So we'll see what happens. You'd think that Adelaide, if they're, if they're willing to part ways with 10 and 20, which is uh, reportedly true, then they're probably going to do a live trade on the night uh, for Conor O'Sullivan. So those are the trade rumors uh, that are currently being talked about. At least those are the ones I have concrete news of. I'm not too sure what the deal is with Melbourne and Hawthorne potentially trading four for six and 11. 
Again, I think this would be predicated on someone like a Zane Dersma being available, which I don't expect to happen anyway. So that deal doesn't make too much sense to me, and I haven't read too much concrete stuff on it. Maybe I'm missing something. But we'll talk about some other ones that did catch my eye and are very interesting. Medium defender and Bulldogs NGA prospects in terms of their academy, Luam, Luamon Luwal. Um, has long been considered probably a top 30 prospect, but this article suggests he is a chance for the first round. So the first round technically goes until pick 28. So maybe that's actually not too much of a bolt. Uh, but that being said, uh, we can rule out the Bulldogs probably being able to match that after pick 40. And it certainly is higher than I had him in my mock drafts. Where would be Sean Manor? This is a player I've probably slept on a little bit because I've known who he is and I keep forgetting to keep including in my mock drafts. But this news surprised me as well. He's, uh, he's the best mature age state league player. He's 26 years old and uh, a bit of a gun, small midfielder, half forward. And he has been most commonly linked to Fremantle. But I think there's a chance that someone like a Richmond or a potentially even a Carlton clubs with um, you know later picks, particularly Carlton who looking for ready-made players and probably dynamic small forward half players could also be in the mix for there. So I, I expect Sean Manor to probably go in the top 35 picks uh, on Monday's draft. And finally, uh, Subiaco product, Lance Collard, continues to be heavily linked to both WA clubs. So that is not a surprise in itself. He's a small forward from WA and um, an exciting talent. The interesting thing that I took from this article is just the absence of him being linked to anywhere else. So that suggests there is an increasing belief, perhaps, that Collard will slide potentially to West Coast at pick 29. I'd be surprised if he gets further than West Coast at pick 29, but crazier things have happened. Oh, and finally, the, there is a bit of trade news in a way, uh, and that is Brisbane, as reported by Cal Toomey, have pretty much agreed in an in-principle deal with Gold Coast to trade for pick 24 live on the night. So Gold Coast looking to maximize points. You'd think Brisbane give up their first two picks in that scenario, but upgrade that to 24. So that's another one I'll have to include in my mock draft, which I'll be working on tomorrow. But anyway, guys, that is all I've got for you in terms of ongoing uh, trade news or draft news rather. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if I wake up to new articles suggesting new rumors uh, that I'll have to take into account to my mock draft and I'll try and do a video for you if there is anything juicy that comes up, which there probably will be. So for now, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.